brand new episode of the podcast entitled Couch Potatoes Unite! Exclamation point, which is based on a blog of the same name because this is House Couch Potatoes and we unite against winter, which is still here. Why is it still here? We don't know, but we'll soldier on. My name is Kylie and I love TV. If you feel the same, keep listening in. We're checking out our website, couchpotatoesunite.wordpress.com as you're bound to find some common ground or something you like. For Couch Potatoes Unite, we're all about the wonders and the unique long form storytelling of the small screen. CPU exclamation point hopes you've been following releases of brand new episodes of the podcast on Wednesdays as well as new blog entries on some Tuesdays and as always we have several more new episodes on the way because the panels and I live lives behind our podcast the episodes are published once per week subscribe to the blog or the podcast via iTunes Stitcher Radio and via Google Play to stay on top of brand new episodes episodes already published discuss a variety of shows around the water cooler including but not limited to Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. New Girl, The Vampire Diaries, The Originals, Orange is the New Black, Supernatural, Gotham, Once Upon a Time, The Good Place, Grace and Frankie, Fuller House, and the DC Television Universe or Arrowverse on the CW. Plus new episodes are in the works including revisits for Doctor Who, Stranger Things, American Horror Story, How to Get Away with Murder, A Series of Unfortunate Events, The X-Files, and the Marvel's Defenders panel will talk season two of Jessica Jones. A final visit with our Broad Church panel, I swear it's coming, to say goodbye to the mystery drama from across the pond. We'll be launching new panels covering Sense8, iZombie, The Crown, Schitt's Creek, and Will and Grace. And because we look back at shows now past, we'll be looking back at one of our most popularly requested panels of all time, that would be Friends, as well as a one and gone series called Battle Creek. By the way... Did you know that CPU also from time to time goes live? We've been live from the bunker, Comedy Outlet Mondays at Dog Story Theater, and Grand Rapids Comic Con, and we're planning more live appearances and other cool stuff. So make sure you like or follow us at our Facebook page, our Twitter at CPU Podcast, or our Instagram at Couch Potatoes Unite, or subscribe to the blog, our YouTube channel, our iTunes channel, our Stitcher Radio channel, or find us on Google Play. In the meantime, if you don't hear your show in this podcast format, follow panelists and I still write reviews, and we always seek new panelists. So if you have any interest in joining the discussion, say hello by finding us at any of those outlets I've mentioned. At the very least, stop by and leave us a thumbs up, comment, or review. We like feedback! Just don't Dracaris all over us. Let's hold a small council meeting first instead. Today, we're around the water cooler and discussing season seven of Game of Thrones, a fantasy drama based upon a series of novels entitled A Song of Ice and Fire by George R.R. R. Martin. The season seven finale aired on premium cable network HBO on August 27th, 2017. To remind the listener, Game of Thrones roughly follows the storyline set out in A Song of Ice and Fire and chronicles the violent dynastic struggles among the realm's noble families for control of the Iron Throne. The series is set on the fictional continent of Westeros and interweaves several plot lines with a large ensemble cast. The seventh season continued the trend of being all original, with the overall narrative officially having surpassed the narrative laid out and published in Martin's series of novels. Therefore, everything depicted on the show this season was of the creator's own design. Previous CPU entries, both podcasts and blogs centered on Game of Thrones, provided plot summary and recap following the principal characters among the more than 200 covered by the show, particularly for seasons 4 and 5. So for a more detailed plot summary, or to delve into the primary characters' past season exploits, listen to those prior podcast episodes or check out our Other Thrones entries on the blog, particularly as few new characters are being introduced at this time. If you didn't already know, you can click the floating box at the top right of the header, the picture of the couch full of TV watchers, and search for any blog entry or prior podcast episode, which is far speedier than even sending a raven these days. For now, know that as of Season 7, still vying for the Iron Throne were Houses Stark, Targaryen, and Lannister, with a minor but unlikely bid from House Greyjoy. However, many of the members of those houses saw their fortunes change dramatically, for better or for worse, in the seventh season. Our noble group of Game of Thrones panelists, namely Kristen, Amanda, Jay, Chelsea, and Rob, have returned, eager and excited to dissect the goings-on of Thrones' seventh season. We're also going to speculate about what season eight might look like, as, as we all know, season eight has been the renewed season, but also announced to be Thrones' final season. The panel will take some time to reflect on what is ultimately near the beginning of the end, but before we do, I'm going to take a moment to double-check the panel's temperature. After all, as we all know, sometimes a TV show can take turns for the better or the worse in our heads, or can continue its level of awesomeness or lack thereof, depending upon its story evolution. As always, it should be noted that all of our panelists have watched all episodes of Game of Thrones to date and will, let's face it, discuss highly sensitive plot points. So for those of you who are not caught up on Game of Thrones, 
First, you've had all this time. And second, listen at your own risk as there are going to be major spoilers. Welcome back, panel. How are you? Doing well, thank you. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Are you ready to talk about Game of Thrones? Sure. Absolutely. Yes. So I'm just going to be honest for the listener. This is actually one of our lost episodes. Found again. We've been very open and honest about that. And so they're talking about it again. You don't have to be, you know, you don't have to remember what you said. Oh, good. good. <laughs> just talk about it like it's new to you. <laughs> Done. <laughs> cool. But we're going to do this because we always do this. I have to take your temperature. We're going to go over the CPU standard character question that changes with each show we do. And of course, I've done one again for Game of Thrones and it's similar yet different because so is the show. So tell me how you feel about Game of Thrones nowadays. Do you watch it because you have to know and to see all? You have to be prepared for what's to come, even if you can't fully compartmentalize your feelings of helplessness and devotion to these characters, as you know not all will survive. Also, now that you know presumably all the story's secrets, you have to know how it all ends if you don't already see the end in your mind, like Bran Stark, otherwise known as the Three-Eyed Raven. Do you watch it because you openly love it and are zealous to protect the show, whatever its transgressions, as if it was your young, even if your young are dragons? In fact, you're ready to take the Iron Throne yourself, though you find yourself continually distracted by handsome strangers from the north, like Daenerys Targaryen. Do you watch it because it's a good time with clever words, and if you are for anything, it's a good time and clever words? Also, it's really shown you something you can believe in as far as TV entertainment goes, which is really something in and of itself, since you're typically somewhat cynical about things like this. Further, you love the dragons, though you know in your heart that most of it will not end neatly, like Tyrion Lannister. Do you watch it because since this season began, you feel like it's got a second life, like Jorah Mormont, or Sandor the Hound Clegane, or Gendry, or the Mountain? Do you watch it because you finally know something, or want to know something, instead of always knowing nothing? And though you care nothing about Iron Thrones, you care everything about whether the citizens and subjects of Westeros will be able to defeat the onslaught of the White Walkers as winter is here, like Jon Snow, a.k.a. spoiler, Aegon Targaryen. Do you watch it to cheer for the underdogs, the names without sigils, who scheme for the better of all, like Varys? Do you watch it because you're obsessed with the secrets and the lore? You want to know exactly who might assume the Iron Throne in the end and hope that the proper claim is observed, like Samuel Tarly and, by extension, Gilly? Do you watch it because you believe that the story ultimately champions strong female characters, despite the naysayers' critiques, like Brienne of Tarth and Tormund Giantsbane, or Missandei and Grey Worm? Do you watch it because it's like home to you and nothing lights a fire under you? Literally nothing, like the fight to protect your home and your family or siblings, like Sansa Stark or Theon no longer reek Greyjoy? Do you watch it because you want it all, the power, the prestige, and the honor of the Iron Throne, and you'll do whatever it takes to keep it, since, so you think, you've lost everything else but the throne for now and have nothing left to lose, like Cersei Lannister? Do you watch it but you don't know why anymore? In fact, you question whether this fight is yours, though better late than never, you might be waking up to the truth that this fight is one of the most epic in which you'll ever be a part, and to the fact that your sister is a selfish, and we've censored that, like Jamie Lannister. Do you watch it to learn how a girl can seek revenge against those who wronged a girl? Plus, you really only care about the survival of the Starks, like Arya Stark. Do you watch it but don't know if you like what you're seeing? You're a natural strategist, but to you the costs outweigh the benefits of a long fight, except any fight against the onslaught of winter and the White Walkers, which could still be cool, like Davos Seaworth, or you don't watch it anymore because you left and you feel your story is near its end anyway, like Melisandre, or because you died, spoiler, like Lord Baelish, aka Littlefinger, Lord Randall Tarly, Olena Tyrell, R.I.P., Ilaria Sand and the Sand Snakes, the Thoros of the Brotherhood, Benjamin Stark, Walder Frey, and thousands of others in the hard-fought battles of the season. Who would like to start? I'm Amanda. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Ken. <laughs> I would say my closest option is Tyrion still, so okay. I'm sticking with my guy. Because I like the words, I like the cleverness of the show, and definitely I love dragons, always have, so I'll stick with that one. Fair enough. Welcome back, Amanda. Thank you. I'm a Stark girl forever, so I'm, 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 I'm Chelsea. Hi, Chelsea. Yes. <laughs> Not Chelsea Stark, but you know, just Chelsea. You want it to be Chelsea Stark. I, I would be. I would allow myself 
to be adopted into that family. But I I have always been really invested in the Stark story, especially the Stark girls, Sansa and Arya. So it was really thrilling this past season to kind of see the siblings get back together, the sisters get back together. And so that was... That was like a big piece of the story I had been longing for for a long time. And, you know, one of six kids and would do anything for my family or my siblings. So just feel like I can really relate to to that, you know, human, very human side of the story. So you're Aria. Yeah, Aria and Sansa. Okay. For sure. Okay. Welcome back, Chelsea. This is Rob. Hi, Rob. Hello. Hi. I would say I'm still most like Bran, or now closer to the Three-Eyed Raven. The, the big picture, I'm excited to see things come full circle. Like we're starting to get some of the big payoffs, and that's exciting me to kind of see what the outcome. There's a light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak, as far as the end game, and I'm really excited to see how it all wraps up. It seems we only have what six episodes left. Yeah, but yeah. longer ones. Yes. Allegedly. Welcome back, Rob. Thank you. This is Jay. Hi, Jay. Still probably leaning towards being Tyrion in the sense that the show is still good. I'm. I guess I, I'm critical of certain things of the show, but I, I feel like. To say that I'm critical of the show doesn't mean that I think it's a bad show in any way, nor do I think it's terrible television in any sense of the word. I, I don't necessarily like the adage of any bad Game of Thrones that show is still a really good piece of television. I, I don't know what that means, but you know, the show overall is just very good in all senses. You know, acting, writing, directing, the way it's shot, the special effects. It's just a good show. And I think that there's very little that can be discerned from that but I, I like the show but you know you always have to shout out to Daenerys Targaryen because you always do because well she's Khaleesi <laughs> <laughs> yes she is <laughs> welcome back Jay hi I'm Kristen hi Kristen hi true to form I'm gonna pick more than one this time what I know right it's a big surprise Tyrion still because I think it's a great show and it's clever and I really really like it and yay dragons because why not? Also, I'm going to pick Brienne of Tarth because I love her and I really like the strong female characters. And on that same note, I'm also going to pick Arya because you can really learn a lot about revenge from Arya. Wow, that's a span. I know. It's not even like just three that are close. No. You want, you just want the whole thing, don't you? She's a complex person. Thank she you. Is. Is. <laughs> I'm complex. Well, Thanks. welcome back, Kristen. Thanks. And of course, I'm Kylie. I'm doing this thing and talking to... And I always pick Daenerys, and I'm sticking with it. I like Daenerys. I am zealous to protect this show, whatever its transgressions. There were a few transgressions this season, I think we will discuss, of course. But ultimately, it's still, it's still probably going to end, depending upon how it ends, this will probably be my most favorite show ever. So for me to divest from it and and not be protected of it like it's my baby dragon would be very, very difficult. <laughs> so I am Daenerys in this context. Welcome back, everyone, and welcome back again, everyone. Right. <laughs> Thanks so for nice. doing this. Yeah. At least it's Game of Thrones, which is very easy to talk about, right? Right. True. All right. So let's get into it. We're talking about Season 7 and all the things that happened in this smaller allegedly season. What did you think of season seven or overall? What did you like? What didn't you like? Compare it to last season's, you know the drill. Go. It's all right. <laughs> I, I mean, overall it was good. It, it's, it's like we're saying, we're on this panel because clearly we like the show. And I don't think that, you know, obviously with your temperature check, no one, none of us have checked out or anything like that. And I think that all of us that are sitting in this room can basically say it's a well done show in, in all respects. But I think that there, there are always more hits than misses or anything like that, and I don't even say, wow, they really missed the mark with all those sort of things. I mean, but I would say that this season had more misses than they usually have, which still isn't a ton, and still, you know, you, you, can, you can look at all the good, you know, that outweighs the bad by a lot. But there are a lot of things that left me head-scratching this season, I think. Such as? Oh, lots of things. We'll get into it. Okay. Let's talk. <laughs> I didn't like the pacing of the season. Yeah. I felt it was very quick. Like, all, they're like, oh, we're going to go to Dragonstone, and the next scene they were at Dragonstone. And it's like, how can you get there from Winterfell so quickly? It just, it felt very jarring, and it took a little while to get used to, considering the, the previous seasons. It took them a while to get where they needed to go, and we actually saw them on their journey. So that would be one of the misses, I think, for me, to kind of quote Jay a little bit. But overall, I thought it was relatively strong. 
but I, I just wish they would have extended it. I could have taken an extra episode or two just to help with pacing. Kristen raises a point, it, it, especially in, you know, at the end of the last season, we had that thing where you have Varys on land talking and then all of a sudden he's in the boat with, yes. mm -hmm. with Daenerys going. But you can see that. You can see that there was probably a passage of time. You kind of forget that. But there were times in this season where practical time jumping comes into play, not just with episode pacing, which I think is a thing, but also the fact of Daenerys rescuing them up in the wall, like one minute she's not there and then, you know... They Gen send a messenger and boom, she's there. Gen Gendry runs the marathon and, you know, really gets to... Yeah, really, really fast. Like, really fast. It gets there and says, send the thing, and then all of a sudden the dragons are there. That's You, know, you have to send a raven, That's got that takes time, but, you know, it got there in a couple hours. And what if the raven gets lost? <laughs> and part of me wonders if that's because these are not coming from the books, so he hasn't written those to fill in the details of what happens in between those times. My guess is he said, here's the highlights, here's the big moments I want to hit, and so they did all of those. I mean, that's my working theory, I'm just throwing that out there into space. But, like, and so certain things maybe wouldn't work as well because they haven't... I mean, when you write a novel, it's very thought out, and you go back and you revise several times. I'm sure that the revision process wasn't nearly as intense for writing the season, so you're going to have mistakes like that happen, I think. I think you're right. I think that's the biggest lag or, or hole, and I think it's a very good working theory. They don't have the books. They could use the books as the backdrop and foundation to fill in all those little details and to show a more deliberate passing of time. But without the books and with the, their production schedule such as it is, which has become more complex, as the shows, as the show has gone on, and as the seasons have gone on, and now putting their their own cap on it and saying this is when we're going to be done, they force themselves into having to pace it this way, right. and it doesn't actually, obviously, completely work all the way across the board because Game of Thrones viewers, I think, are generally pretty intelligent. At least they get what's going on, and they're watching all of this stuff transpire, and yet. As Kristen said, it was going one way for so long, and now all of a sudden it's going a different way. It's hard not to notice that kind of thing. Yeah. It's, it's a big change. And I would agree with that, too. Yeah, the pacing, there was a lot to fit in this season, but that was actually one of my favorite parts of the season. I think this is one of my favorite seasons that they've had, just because of how much that they covered, how many storylines finally crossed and like the dragon pit at the end of the season they're like having all of these big you know heavy hitters all of these stories and they're finally all in one place and that was i thought a really cool scene to finally finally see after all of these seasons to see all of these these people together so yeah, it was really satisfying mm -hmm. it was one of my favorite scenes of the whole season i think yeah well, we're starting to whittle it down, as you pointed out. There's only so many houses still in contention to end up on top. You know, we're starting to really peel away some of the lesser families, the ones that don't actually have a chance, and we're we're getting down to it. I mean, we're you can start seeing the writing on the wall, and it's exciting to see that happen and how things are gonna end up. Agreed, and that actually compensates for the p pacing for me as well. There were. So many cool moments that even though, yeah, it was really dumb that somehow Gendry was able to run from where they were to the wall and then somehow get a raven to Daenerys and Daenerys somehow jumped on her dragon and then rode north and saved all of their lives, theoretically, except for a couple, <laughs> which was all happened in the space of an episode. Yeah, okay. But wasn't it cool that it happened? Yeah, <laughs> it was cool yeah. except it made me mad, the outcome of that. Well, yes. Yeah. I know, I went straight to the end of the season. Wow, wow. We can we can build up to that depressing moment because that <laughs> threw off everything. <laughs> Why did that have to happen? <laughs> I can kind of see that coming, though. I had a feeling. The zombie dragon? You yeah. saw that coming? I kind of had a feeling. I don't know. How are they going to up the stakes? Oh, give them a dragon. That's, yeah. that's why you have to stakes. How are they going to get past the wall? Oh, oh give them a dragon. dragon and the dragon <laughs> will burn down the wall. Yeah. I don't know. I just had a feeling. There are so many other ways. They didn't have to take the dragon. <laughs> but it wouldn't have been good television if they didn't. I and mean, it's I Game know. of Thrones. Nobody, nothing is safe. No, no, is sacred. no nothing right. we love is sacred or safe. You love to rip well, your heart out. And it, it muddies the waters in the two future fights because I know we're going to talk about predictions for the final season and all that sort of stuff. But I think 
it's very easy to see. Just as you were talking about all these dominoes kind of falling with these very satisfying moments, Daenerys meeting Jon Snow, all of these things that you're kind of waiting for, Daenerys coming to the mainland, coming to Westeros finally, all these things that you've been waiting for all this time, a lot of them happened in this previous season, and they were very satisfying to see. And I think that no matter how we think it's going to end up, and it's going to end up in some way, two things have to sort of resolve themselves in a way. There needs to be a resolution with all the stuff in King's Landing. Yes. And then there needs to be a resolution with the White Walkers yes. coming down. Like these are the two big battles slash fights slash resolutions. And what we saw, we saw all these satisfying moments in the season. We saw the dragons in battle against the Lannister army, and it wasn't close, right? I mean, they just the one dragon just went in there and just wiped the floor with a huge portion of the army and and all Drogan. that sort of yes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Oh, we yeah. have to call them out because, you know, he's her pet. Because they have names. <laughs> These fictitious things have names. They do! <laughs> they have feelings! So, they do. They do. <laughs> so, but we saw, you know, it's, it's kind of that thing of, you know, Daenerys is coming with the dragons, and the dragons are a huge threat, and they're like, oh no, we've got a ballista. But as you <laughs> saw, the dragons were this huge threat, and they just wiped the floor with a big part of the army. So when you're sitting here going like, oh, we're set for this final battle between Daenerys and, and the Dothraki and her dragons against the Lannister army, it's not going to be close. When you look at it, you're like, she's going to wipe the floor with them. But now she's missing a dragon. So now that instead of three, they have two, which still advantage Daenerys, but, you know, Forces are weakened, she has less of a dragon, that puts that fight a little more into doubt, and now you add on to the fact that the White Walker army has a dragon of their own, that makes that fight way more into doubt. Well, yeah, because she did have the three dragons, but that's really what she's got going for her, are the dragons. Mm -hmm. The White Walkers are special. <laughs> they don't die except by certain weapons and dragons. Mostly dragon created weapons. Glass, Valyrian steel, whatever is the case. So We're to me, there. huh? We're getting there though. Yeah. The I was. know, I know, but it just, we don't know what zombie dragon is either. We don't, that's an unknown element because it hasn't been covered in the books. We don't know if it's going to make this dragon more of a threat, less of a threat. How is dragon going to function? Other than taking down the wall. Yeah, I want to know how ice dragon gets to shoot fire. I don't know but that. His, but the flames were all blue. It's cold they were fire. blue. Okay. Yeah. So cold to tie. So cold to tie. Yep. <laughs> yep. See, that seems very magical to me. Kind of just saying. Yeah. <laughs> ice does not work. Well, an army of the dead is <laughs> Science kind of does not work that way. That is not a science. Okay, we have the three eyed raven. We have an undead army walking through there. Now you're now you're going to be concerned no, with science? No, it's fantasy. It's not science. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantasy, it's people. Fantasy. Which is why I'm saying the blue fire is a variable. We don't know right. what blue mm -hmm. fire is going to do. Exactly. <laughs> it's it's, it's going to hurt. You know, we well, we sort of know that. It's not good. No. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it's not definitely good. not good. <laughs> yeah. Not a thing I want to meet. Anywhere. Not a, Speaking nope. of meeting, I really hope that Tormund survived the wall. Because he was on the wall mm -hmm. when the dragon got the wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By the way, the dragon who's zombified is Viserion. We know that for sure. The one named after the really awful, awful brother. brother. Yeah. So well, yeah. I wonder if that was parallelism. <laughs> I'm sure that was why that dragon was chosen. I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I don't know. I should I have know Tormund idea. made it. He needs to end up with Brienne in the end. That's what yeah, I see. He needs to. He needs to live. He needs a happy ending. We've shipped that. Yeah, it's it's all good. He's got googly eyes for her. Do do we? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Why wouldn't we? They need to have giant children. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the giant died, so we need more giants. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Chase unimpressed. <laughs> Chase not into shipping people apparently. <laughs> Especially not giants. <laughs> the rest of us are way into it, so he's out. Oh, but he is, he's at least comic relief, and I'm yeah. feeling that our sources of comic relief have greatly reduced. Yeah, yeah they have. <laughs> so that's why I hope he survives, at the very least. At least until some part or portion of season eight. They can die together, I guess, if they're going to die. No, they no. don't need to die. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Style. I, 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 I'm just I saying both are I have a feeling that a lot of people are going to not make it. Yeah. Yeah, people will die. That's the whole thing of Game of Thrones. Everybody dies. Everybody dies. Everybody plays the game. So let's talk about some of these huge moments that have happened. The ones that you were talking about that made you giddy and gleeful, except for the weird things that happened around them. So, for example, Daenerys finally makes it to Westeros, 
and meets what, who we find out is her nephew. <laughs> Spoiler, if you didn't already know, although they kind of confirmed that before this season started, Jon Snow is a secret Targaryen. The long-held theory has been confirmed. I thought their meeting was fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought John seeing the dragons and his yeah. reaction and his absolute just love of them was very cool. And connection. And them. connection. And the connection. Yeah. Yes. You know, it's. I think in that way he takes on the role of the fans in that moment where we're all like, ooh, pretties. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like we don't have any control over them, but we do really love and adore them and think they're cool. At least anybody who's like me, but I think a lot of people think that way. I think that And so way. that was fun, and they had the little, you know, semi-power struggle of who's going to be. In the throne be. room? Yes. Mm -hmm. I love, 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 loved the moment where Miss and I goes through Daenerys' entire name and then Davos says, this is Jon Snow. He's from the North. They're king of the He's North. He's king of the North. <laughs> Which I know I said that last time, but I meant it because I'm saying it again. That was so funny. <laughs> yes. And actually that scene was one of my favorite scenes in the series because you have these two rulers quote unquote, they're not quite established, but they're established in their own way, kind of vying against each other, secretly related. And I thought that scene was electric, personally. I really, really enjoyed it. Even if it wasn't supposed to happen, or I don't know if George R. R. Martin intended for those two characters ever to meet, but the fact that they met that way was really fun. Well, and they're two of the fan favorites. Yes. So, mm -hmm. of course, having them join forces just makes us all... Plus Tyrion in the same room. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think. But I think that no matter how, I mean, Martin hasn't written the end, so maybe he'll change it based on, you know, what's gone on. But you have to think that the two of them had to meet. It's the song of Fire and Ice. You know? Yeah. So, and he's ice and she's fire. Like, that's literally... Unless he's both the ice and the fire. <sighs> I really don't like that. Like, I, I, I really don't. And Because, like, I understand. I understand he's a Targaryen, but, like... Are you thinking like? Are you thinking like once? Let's assume. Let's let's assume because because it's not an, it's it's not a guarantee. But let's assume that Jon Snow is is told this or he has found out that he is actually Targaryen blood, you know, and all that sort of stuff. Like, is he just gonna say, oh well, I guess my name's Aegon Targaryen now, and I'm gonna change my banners and join the Targaryens? Like, no, I don't think that's what it means. If that were to mean right. what it means, right? So so when you're like, well, he's secretly fired. <laughs> He's ice. He's a Stark. Even if he is of Targaryen blood, that you know, and all that sort of stuff. Like he's at the end of this, he, you know, if if he had his way, he would be king in the north. True. That's all he wants. And that's what he wants. And he wants to live. Does he really want it though? Well. Well. He's accepted it. Yeah, he's accepted it and all that sort of stuff. But you know, he's not like, boy, I really want the Targaryens and to you know do Targaryen things. Like he wants to do Stark things. Yeah, he was raised as a Stark. Yeah, and I and I feel like if 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 he <laughs> if he finds out in the final season and he's like, yeah, all right, I'm changing my name, changing my banner's gonna go with these guys. I think everyone's gonna be like, Jon Snow, you suck. Like they, they, you are not the person we went on this journey with. Like he is the Stark. He is the Wolf, the Ice in the North. No matter what his bloodline is. I don't think that's what it means if it were to mean. I don't think he would ever do that. You're right. It kind of goes, links back into the whole prince who was promised, and what does that really mean? <laughs> well, it's that he has both bloodlines in him. Correct. Yeah. And it does that matter. matter versus the fact that she's one and he is the other? Right, and I understand that like A Song of Ice and Fire is like, it's multiple things. It's not just <laughs> one thing. Right. It's, it's her and him. It's also him in general. It's... You know, the dragons versus the white wine. There's so many parallels, you know, ice and yes. fire, I get it. But <laughs> again, I feel like, you know, when you're like, oh, I don't know if our Martin ever intended Daenerys and Jon to me. It's like, clearly he did. Okay. That's yeah. part of the whole... Fair I enough. Whole I, I, think, I still liked it. <laughs> I think, like we said, it's, we all anticipated that anybody left alive is going to have to come together at the end. Yes. So I think they all have to, eventually, if they haven't already come together. I mean... You know, all of the people that came together for the big meeting are going to have to figure out what to do about these White Walkers. Including Cersei? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, she's either going to have to be killed off or she's going to have to figure out how she's going to handle that. Whether it's to run and hide until everybody else is dead, but then she's going to be up a creek anyway. It's not like just she and her forces can do anything about it. 
or I mean I don't know what she would think she's able to do if everybody else is just run over doesn't make any sense but not that everybody always acts in their best interest either so including especially especially <laughs> Cersei she's very impulsive which then begs the question this Maggie the Frog prophecy is nigh like she's she's running up against it she's lost all her kids unless you think she's really pregnant we can discuss that piece of it. What do you guys think? Do you think she's really pregnant? And then by who? Is it Jamie's? Yeah, I mean, I think you can assume that it's Jamie because they haven't really shown her with anyone else as of late. But yeah, I think that's just one more level of the story to add to the rest of the pot of, yeah, it's just a mix of everything right now. So why not just add this right on? And then that would, I feel like in a way, help fulfill the prophecy that we've known from the beginning. I think, I think she's definitely pregnant. So do you think she's going to die? And is she going to die before the big fight or in the big fight? Because we know the big fight's coming. Or at least possibly multiple big fights. Well, here's another question. I, I think the possibility, you can say the, there's a possibility that she runs away and hides in a cave until this is all over. There's always that possibility. I think that the probably the more likely situation is if she doesn't do that, she's probably done. Mm -hmm. She's probably going to die. So then the question is, is really, who kills her? Right. Well, if the prophecy comes true, it's her younger brother. It's, it's Jamie. And it's Jamie, because... Yeah. Or Tyrion, or but Tyrion, it's, yeah. it'll be more satisfying if it's, if it's Jamie. Jamie but who is the younger twin? Who is the younger twin? Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I think I said this in our Lost episode. It's Lost. It, it's Lost. But what if it's the, the baby that kills her? What if she dies during childbirth? Because what if it's a boy and it's the little brother to her other children? I don't know if the, if the prophecy is that loosely interpreted or if it was specifically said it would be her younger brother. I remember you saying this yeah. in the Lost episode. <laughs> yeah, because it, it just says by, yeah, the, the, the term translates to younger brother. Yeah. But it didn't specify if it's her younger brother or a younger brother of her kids. Like, I don't remember if it was specific or not. So I it, thought it said her younger brother. Because she thought forever that it was Tyrion. Mm -hmm. Which, granted, she had much prejudice and bias she against did. him. Because he killed, in her mind, their mother in childbirth. Right. So wouldn't that be poetic for her to go out in childbirth? I guess. Uh, most satisfactory most, for me would be Jamie. It would, yeah, and then for me Tyrion, too. And then childbirth. Because mm, yeah. like, let's be honest, like half the women died in childbirth. Like That's just not... Like, it's not. It's but she's, that's not she's, exciting she's for me. She's so evil and so terrible, and everyone's like, "Oh, I want her to get her come up." And oh, she, she died in childbirth. Yeah. Oh. I I whatever. I'm not it. even convinced that Convenient. she's pregnant. Yeah. I, I want Jamie to kill her. I think she pulled an old-fashioned pregnancy scare when he said he was leaving. Mm -hmm. it, I'm not convinced she's yeah. pregnant. It's interesting because I don't have any reason to not. I mean, I know that she's untrustworthy, but like as an audience person, the way it was presented as of right now, I don't have a reason not to believe her. But it would be that would be a good final straw for Jamie to just you know if if, if, he <laughs> find, if he finds out that you know because you know, he clearly was like I'm trying to separate a little bit, and she's mm -hmm. like, well, you can't because I'm pregnant. And then if he finds out that that's a lie, that could be good final straw material because ignore I'm going to ignore the White Walker threat doesn't seem like enough motivation for Jamie yeah. Lannister to, to kill her. I wonder how long we have, because like, I don't know if she actually is pregnant, if he would kill her while she's pregnant, but then can she like have baby and then he like kills her and makes it look like or she Or if she has a miscarriage or if she aborts the baby. Yeah. Would she do that, though? Because she's I don't think so... She'd abort the I don't baby. think she'd abort it. She wouldn't but abort it. If she had a miscarriage. So yeah. I don't know. Well, the miscarriage would be a weird insertion into yeah. the current story progress, though. Yeah. I think either it's a lie or she ends up having the baby. I agree. And either way, Jamie should kill her. I also <laughs> agree. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, yes. I sound really bloodthirsty right here. <laughs> <laughs> she deserves it. She, she does. I mean, awful. I don't know if she's even in the love to hate category still because once they have that council, that that really awesome scene where everybody, oh, the looks between her and Daenerys were awesome. I really think Amelia Clark and Lena Headey nailed that, knocked that out of the park. But after that whole situation and people trying to convince her this threat is real and everything that they were doing to try to convince her, including that stupid quest to go get the white yeah. which was like <laughs> the worst part of the season for me because i still could not buy that whole piece of why they did that i mean i know they were trying to convince her but didn't actually do anything and it did lead to the dragon becoming a zombie and i just that was probably actually the whole point was they needed a way to lose the dragon 
and this was their solution to come up with it. Yeah. I I'm guessing from that. like from the showrunner's point of view, that's what makes the most logical sense to me. But in the end, she's not even convinced. So she's right now she's on my you're tedious and you're ready to die list. Well, I think Please she was go. convinced, but she was like, I'm in the south. You guys up there are basically going to take the brunt of it. I'll figure it out mm -hmm. myself. When it's, if and when that. it gets to me. Exactly. It's just kind of like. I'm not helping any of you. I so. have the throne. It, and it's always a good exercise in how much do people understand this threat, right? Because the thing is, is that we as an audience have clearly seen the threat that's and true. know that it is the worst threat imaginable, right? And that's why Jon Snow is sort of our proxy in a lot of these things, because Jon Snow it seems to be the only major character who's like, oh, it's a threat. <laughs> and it's like, you know, this... Two J's Jon Snow voice. <laughs> <laughs> But he's but he's our he's our hero as it goes, and I know Daenerys is a hero in a way, and it's like that's the whole point is that Jon Snow takes the season. He's like, no, it's the White Walkers, right? And it's like that's the whole thing. And so Daenerys at that point, like after she goes up and loses and blah blah, blah she's like, yeah, that's that's huge. We need to deal with this. I'm with you, and he's like, and I'm with you, and it's the whole you know they're together now, and it's the whole you know we root, we rooted sense. for Jon, we root for Daenerys, but like ultimately between Iron Throne and between White Walker threat. The White Walker threat is is the overall, this could wipe everything out, and the Iron Throne doesn't matter at that point because nobody's left alive alive. There's that whole thing, and obviously the fact that, you know, Daenerys is like, I'm only concerned with the Iron Throne, and Jon Snow's like, forget that, it's the White Walkers, the fact that both of them are together are like, no, 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 okay, we need to take care of this, and we'll take care of this too once we take care of this, and, you know, all this sort of stuff will play itself out. And then the fact that, I like the fact that Cersei does, isn't with him, because it, it's so true to form, right? It's the fact that she's like, Oh shoot, that's a threat. Eh, I'll deal with it later. Or you guys will deal with it first. You guys will take the brunt of it. Like I I I think that's a cool thing. In hindsight though, the fact that Cersei's character is of that nature of I'm not gonna deal with this right now, I'm not gonna throw all my force with you guys and we'll fight for the Iron Throne when we take this thing later, it it makes that whole fetch quest to go get the white just seem really cruddy in yeah. in retrospect with the execution of the weird passage of time to the fact that we lost a dragon to the you know all these sorts of things you're just kind of like oh it was all just oh throwing my hands up in the air and to be fair i'm very emotionally invested number one i admit it and number two i agree there has to be a character like cersei and she is the character left that pre presents the tension that you're just talking about right now at the same time uh she's talking about the bank <laughs> And all the money she's lost and or gained and or paying back and I don't know. I mean, that will all work itself out. But, and you're right, it's hindsight as well. I, I've never liked Cersei. Well, I don't know if you're ever really supposed to. They try to get you to sympathize yeah. with her when she takes her naked walk and things of that nature. But how do, she killed Alaria. <laughs> how about the elimination of the final sand snakes? That's rough. <laughs> That was cold. Yeah. But like perfect. Like exactly. I mean, they were vicious too. They were not innocent, pristine characters either. And yeah, she they just started it. <laughs> <laughs> she just finished it. Yeah, like I'm not sure yeah. you poke that bear. Yeah. Like that's just not. Mm -hmm. You don't do that sort of thing to Cersei and think you're going to get away with it. Like she will find a way, mm -hmm. if at all possible, to make you pay. And I think the. The poetic justice of having it be the same way her daughter was killed is just, I mean, it's deliciously nasty. And to but. show you that I'm complicated, I mean, that part did give me at least some satisfaction mm -hmm. because obviously everybody feels the Sand Snakes were a, a flatline storyline that never took off, Yeah. never really did anything other than kill the right. daughter. They just had their little part to play. It was poetic mm -hmm. for Cersei in a way. Yeah, but, but, then, but then she took it the step further. Not only did she kill all three of the daughters, but the last one, yes, the same way that their daughter was killed. But then she's making, what's her name, the, the mom? Valaria. Thank you. Her watch, her daughter's body decompose. That's rough. You need a competent villain. Yeah, mm -hmm. she is one, that's she for sure. Can. You know, and, and especially because the previous rulers of the Iron Throne, her kids, you know, Joffrey, Joffrey was so mean and evil, but I don't know if you'd ever call him super competent, like he had people in place to help him with, you know, some of the dirty stuff, and then he was just this I don't think he was evil, minimally competent. Yeah, he's this evil little brat, and then you had Tommen, of course, poor Tommen. And over his head. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, we all are sitting there going like, Daenerys is coming to take the Iron Throne. It's like you kind of want somebody semi-competent on that throne. If she if she just comes and says, all right, Tommen, 
come aside and okay, yes, ma'am. You know, it's just kind of this whole whatever. You know, the fact that Daenerys has got to take the throne from Cersei, who is so ruthless and mean. She blew up the Sept. She's you know playing with the Sand Snakes. I think that's cool. Okay. And, and it makes it makes the fact that Cersei Lannister is just a badass in her villainy. That's true. I think she's a very effective villain. Mm -hmm. I don't like her, but you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to. And I think it's kind of wonderful that she has almost no redeeming values. Even, you know, even her walk of, you know, shame or whatever you want to call it. It's really just the how terrible of a society that they would do this sort of thing. And yet you're like, I don't really feel bad that it's happening to her specifically. Mm hmm I just think it's terrible that it would happen in general. Like, you don't actually... It, it gives you lots of complicated emotions to deal with because of that. Because we never actually want to see anything go well for her. We want to see her pay. I think it's very interesting that they've made some very deliberate beat connections between her and the Mad King. So there's the, the extraneous theory that any one of the Lannisters or all of them could be his illegitimate children. But even if they're not, the fact that they kind of set her up as sort of the next gen Mad King heiress who's causing all these horrible problems yet again, returning the circle. He's a Targaryen, she's a Lannister. It just makes, so far, it just makes for a very interesting history repeats kind of storytelling. Which brings in Jamie, the Kingslayer. Yes, who slayed him. Yep, if history's going to repeat itself, and that ties in with the Maggie the Fog theory to make that full circle again. All right, well, and we already have seen that his love for someone can be overcome when he knows that they're not in a safe place for, yeah. the, for the country. So, you know, his loyalty to the people is greater than his loyalty to any one ruler, even his sister lover. <laughs> <laughs> if only you could see the face I was making when I made that laugh. Hashtag twin -cest. <laughs> Speaking of incest, I feel we have to mention the other romance. Nice segue. <laughs> what other segue is there for me? Yeah, like, no. to move on from you. <laughs> All right. So let's go there. Jay can use his Jon Snow voice again. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why would I do that? <laughs> it seems like a ripe opportunity. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, they went at it, and they're related. Hey. At, at least they, they don't know. They don't know they're related. <laughs> And it's that kind of relationship. I loved reading the internet commentary because half of you roots for it because it's them, but then you know the truth and you're like, no, it's icky. <laughs> yes, it's icky. And, 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 I, and I think that no one's going to sit here and say, it isn't icky, but I guess... <laughs> technical if, if, term. <laughs> technical term. But the, the thing is, is that, you know, we've had all, you know, seven seasons of the Lannisters paving the way for, okay. you know... It's not shocking. It was all for a purpose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was desensitize us. Yeah. 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 It's so bad. Well, they're not even not siblings. I mean, like, no. that's like... I know. Yeah. They're a little more removed. Well, and the Targaryen history, like, their bloodline was very close. Like, they would have brothers marry sisters, mm -hmm. and or both sisters, I think, in one case. and That's true, but that was a distant fact we weren't watching. I know, <laughs> but it, I mean, it's, you know, gives new meaning to the word yeah. sister wives, I think, a little bit. <laughs> royals and dynasties and... Yeah, keeping it closed. And, yeah, and our own world history. Yeah. Yeah. Cousins yeah. marry cousins and yeah. I, want, yeah, I, I keep wondering pieces. if that's a thing we're supposed to be like hung up over or we just have to like accept it and move on. Uh, that's and that's kind of how I feel. Like you're just supposed to like this is kind of this what, what happens is. sometimes. And yeah. yeah, it's unknown to them but They'll yeah. find out, and then they'll probably yeah. have a freak-out moment, and then everything will be, oh, but I love you anyway. Well, and one of the inspirations for the novels was The War of the Roses. Mm hmm yeah. So, I mean, it, it's there. It's going to have to be there. Yeah. <laughs> but, and it's Jon Snow, who I know some people in this room think he's the worst, but I think he's the dreamiest. <laughs> Even though he knows nothing. <laughs> Repeatedly. <laughs> you can be dreamy without yeah. knowing anything. Yeah, I not talk. You, you can be hot and dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> he's not dumb. He's just, he's ignorant. He's <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's better. Apparently, <laughs> he's just ignorant. He doesn't have all the information. <laughs> That's why he needs. That's why he needs I Sam. See, I can see the. Point. I mean, you see yeah. where I'm going with that. Okay. <laughs> he should be more blissful by that. 
but he takes everything so seriously. <laughs> he is serious. He's so broody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who bets that Daenerys is going to end up pregnant oh, since yeah. they did the deed? And also, who wants to analyze Tyrion's expression when he That's watched cool. them go behind oh, a closed he's door? He's heartbroken. You think it's a crush? I think he's heartbroken. I think it, <laughs> I think his heart got ripped out and stomped on a little bit. Oh, of course, I'm still holding out that he's her secret brother too. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't take it that way. I did I not. Know. I did. His like, expression. Does there was something else going on? I don't. Yeah, I don't really recall the expression, but I, I never really read that he was like in love with her. He admires her. He yeah. very much cares about her, feels very protective yeah. of her. It's very much like the, the code of chivalry in the in the pledging your your honor to your lord or whatever. Like he's so bent on getting her where she needs to be in his mind that like I think it's really more of just that loyalty versus And a dash of hero worship. Because mm -hmm. she is, in his mind and in Varys' mind, she is what's going to save the country. Dragons and Yes. All. Yes. Yeah, I think it's more, his relationship is more of that, where he really truly believes she is the right answer. And so, and someone he can get behind, he likes her values, and I mean, given his family, you know, that's got to be really refreshing for him to actually be able to believe in his leader because he hasn't really had that before because they all were mean. <laughs> <laughs> they all are still mean. <laughs> right, but now he's, that's not his leader. Right, anymore. that's not his leader. Now his leader is someone who is really compassionate, sometimes foolish because of that compassion, but I think he can forgive that as opposed to people who are just cruel for the sake of being cruel and for power. She's cruel sometimes. I mean, you know, she did have, she did dragon people. Yeah, she but, did Karist all over the Tarleys. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> but we, Which, like, they brought we it on themselves. We didn't like the Tarleys anyway. No, Sam. we didn't. Just right. Sam. Just Sam. Love Sam. Need, I love need him. more Sam. Yes. And we'll have to talk about the dinner conversation where secrets just get spilled randomly. Yes. Fine. <laughs> but, yeah, I think that she can be vicious, but I don't think she ever takes a lot of pleasure in that. He finds it admirable. So what was the look then, if not romantic admiration? Because to me it looked very suspicious, and I, I took that one of two ways. Because there was already kind of a fraying between the two of them, right? Mm -hmm. He had advised a strategy to deal with the Lannisters. She ended up dividing her forces. She sent the Unsullied one way and the Dothraki another way. The Unsullied got decimated because the Greyjoys and Jaime Lannister and their army kind of did the same thing. Basically did some stealth and, and secret attack them while also taking out House Tyrell for their finances because they're the richest house, which we must talk about Olenna. Don't let me forget. But in the meantime, because that dealt such a blow to them, Daenerys kind of stopped listening to Tyrion at some point. And I think Tyrion was very weary of Jon Snow, not because he doesn't like Jon Snow, but more because Jon Snow is a distraction for her, away from her ultimate quest or pursuit, but also because I really get the sense that he doesn't entirely trust Jon. I don't know why, but there's a lack of trust there. Maybe just healthy Lannister versus Stark lack of trust, but... Or could it be that maybe he thinks Jon will replace him? As, as hand? Yep. It could be that. Well, and sometimes, you know, you see somebody start a relationship and you know it's going to have an impact on them. Right. And you're concerned about that. Like, right. okay, things are going to change and maybe he's just not loving that uncertainty. I don't know. I think also <laughs> Tyrion is always thinking about her reign. You know, and what's good for her reign. Yeah. And, and being allied with Jon Snow and having him bend the knee to Daenerys and be the king in the north and kind of keep the north on lock and have his armies and himself. Because, you know, for all of my browbeating of Jon Snow, I think <laughs> what we are supposed to come out of it is that he's a very capable and excellent field commander of troops. And the fact that, you know, he's got the respect of the people in the north and he can capably command those armies, that's an asset. And I mean, Tyrion even said so at some point, like, you know, you probably need an ally with this guy, he's gonna help you out, and all that sort of stuff. So I think on that point, point he doesn't mind, but I think that for all that Jon is good in the field, it's kind of like Daenerys. Daenerys is a good speech giver and was very good at getting people to follow her, but, you know, we, her time in the East was sort of trying to hammer out, this is how you lead. Mm -hmm. This is how you lead a kingdom of people. 
And I think that to Tyrion, he's like, I don't think John's going to help her lead a kingdom of people other than being her arm in the north. And so, you know, she already sort of, you know, cut ties with everybody in the east because they weren't going to help her with any sort of... Iron throne getting. Iron throne getting and or allies afterwards or, mm-hmm. you know, and all that sort of stuff. And it's like, John's a good ally to have now, but he's pledged his fealty. He's with her, whether they're doing it or not. And so <laughs> I think he's just basically like... I don't know if this is, you know, this is fine, but I don't know if this is great. Well, John has always been a reluctant leader. Like, he hasn't been one, like, you know, he's always been put in the place of a position of leadership. And so I think, I don't know, it almost made sense for him to kind of bend the knee to Danny because that's never been his ultimate goal. Whereas I think he can really see that she has, you know, more of a, you know, pure heart about getting the Iron Throne and why she wants the Iron Throne and... But yeah, I just I, I never saw him as power hungry in any way. I think he's always been just kind of pushed in that direction by the people around him. So let's talk about the death of Olena. Diana Rigg is the best. She's amazing. <laughs> I love her so much. And by the way, tell Cersei it was me. Just just as you mm-hmm. said, the the meeting between Daenerys and Jon Snow could be one of your favorite moments in the series. I think Olena's death scene or her final yeah her final scene her final scene with Jamie Lannister could be one of mine like yeah. it was just well done in all ways it was just great certainly an MVP for the entire show and also one of those sources of comic relief <laughs> and she but at least she went out her way which I think is probably the most fitting ending and satisfying that it could have been for her well and I think she was that scene was really important for Jamie's story too because she was definitely kind of putting these, you know, seeds of doubt in his head, like about, you know, his sister, and she's not, you know, she's going to be the end of you, she's going to be your demise, and you can kind of see that working on in his brain and on his face during that exchange. Mm-hmm. The season did a, a lot of things that I think the season did well. When we're reaching the end of the series, you know, in fact, we only have one season left, and was it seven, eight episodes they're doing? Six. Six, six. six extra long episodes. Six uh. extra long episodes. So when you think of it, it's, it's almost like it's time. Like the resource we have now is time. We have six extra long episodes of Game of Thrones, which extra long, what, you know, hour and a half, two hours? Nine, there, yeah, they yeah. said that the first five will be between 70 and 90 minutes, depending on what the network wants. The last, like the series finale, they different. said could be two hours. Right, so we've got about 10 hours of, 10-ish hours of Game of Thrones left. So the question is, how do you, how do you maximize this time? How do you get everything to where it needs to be? And all that sort of stuff. And it's like, yeah, you know, with a show, sometimes shows meander, especially on shows on network television where, like, the whole goal is to have more and more seasons and advertising time. But, you know, this HBO show, they know this is it. We're doing it. This is the thing. So at that point, you know, you need to you need to maximize your time. And I think that something that this season did really well in a lot of ways was that, look, how's Terrell, even though we like Lady Olena and, you know, Marjorie was Marjorie and all that sort of stuff, like, they're not going to factor into the end. And they never, I mean, they were going to be a thing, right? But they're not taking the Iron Throne. We all kind of knew that. So, like, we need to wrap that up. Mm-hmm. And they did. I think they did it in a really nice way, kind of like with the with Dorne and the Sand Snakes. It's like, they needed to be wrapped up. They did it in, a, in an interesting way with yeah. Cersei. Same thing with House Frey. Wrapped yeah. that up right away. Right away. <laughs> Super Which right is away. really a continuation because we it saw is. it at the last yeah. season finale, but they then they gave us the gory detail. <laughs> yeah, that was such a satisfying way. I think that was our word. Last oh yeah, we hardly yeah. talked about satisfying. the Starks, Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> you got to talk about the Starks. Uh, They're your people. Yeah. Well, I was just saying, like, yeah, the opening scene of the entire season at House House Frey and the head baked into the pie. And- <laughs> <laughs> Watching yeah. everybody, you know, everybody die that deserved to die. And yeah, so that was very, that was a great way to kick off the season for me. That got me very excited mm-hmm. about what's, what's going to happen for the rest of the Stark family. So it was a really good scene. What but, about Arya and Sansa? This well, season? Arya is a superhero now. That's yep. true. <laughs> <laughs> yep. She's, she's quite literally a superhero. She can literally take any form and kill people. A magical ninja. Except Ed Sheeran. <laughs> no. oh. Except Ed Sheeran. Except Ed Sheeran. Except Ed Sheeran. <laughs> but really he sings that. so lovely. Yeah. <laughs> we show a scene of her just murdering that whole party. <laughs> fun, but yeah. fun. Aww, yeah. come that on. Was, that was probably <laughs> the most one of the most pointless scenes in the season was Ed Sheeran. 
because they only brought him on because Maisie Williams, who plays Arya, that she loves Ed Sheeran. So that was like a thank you gift to her was to get him on the show. I mean, yeah, but it was short. And also in that same extension of the scene, she encountered Nymeria, her lost dire wolf. That's yeah. right. Which was a very important scene because it motivated her to go north as opposed to south because she was headed back to King's Landing to continue with her list. Mm -hmm. And she took the other way. And we're glad she did. Yeah. We're yes. glad. Because things worked out really well. She was reunited with her sister. It's kind of like the only season where things went well for Starks. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. 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 But it yeah. went, I mean, it looked, they had us like wondering for a while. They made it look like things maybe weren't so great with that reunited sisters. And then we had like... Bam! Surprise attack! They're really working together. Yeah, but by yes. Baelish. Let's talk about the downfall of Littlefinger because talk oh, about a satisfying oh, moment. Oh, was that was great. very good. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good because like they had the way they were showing it. It looked like he was manipulating them and really mm -hmm. the so other way around. <laughs> yeah, and it was so wonderful because I don't think he saw it coming. Mm -mm. Well, and that was like, I wasn't a big fan of, I remember watching the episodes of when the, you know, the Stark sisters were, you know, kind of fighting and it looked like, you know, Arya, you know, kind of had this look in her eye, like maybe she was gonna, you know, hurt Sansa or something like that. And I just remember turning to Rob and being like, I don't like this. Like, this doesn't seem right to me. Like, I don't feel like this is something that they would be doing, but... You know, when you finally see, you know, why they had to kind of paint the story in that way because they were tying up Littlefinger and they needed a way to get him out of the, out of the story. So I, I understand why they had to kind of go that way, but it just, it felt a little contrived to me. Like, I don't, I don't think this is what they would really be doing, but when you find out it was because they were working together mm -hmm. and scheming together and Stark forever then, you know, it's all good. <laughs> well, even just the way that they staged that last scene when mm -hmm. they were accusing Littlefinger, you know, it almost looked like she was accusing Arya mm -hmm. from where Arya was standing. Then all of a sudden Sansa just goes, and how do you respond to these charges? Lord Baelish. And, <laughs> like, looks over to him against the wall, and he's like, what, well, oh, me? You're talking to me? Okay. Yeah, no, that was, and Arya slit his throat with the same weapon that he gave to an agent to try to kill Bran in season one, which was very much poetic justice, mm -hmm. I think. Especially considering that the whole reason everybody's in this mess is because of Littlefinger. He mm -hmm. started the chain of events that led to Robert's Rebellion, that led to everything we see mm -hmm. now in these seasons. And it was, I thought it was well directed and a great way, and in the... Jay's description of the use of time, I thought it was probably the best possible way that Littlefinger could have been excised from mm -hmm. the story. Speaking yeah. of things that aren't getting excised, though, and people that probably won't win, and yet they're still there, let's talk about House Greyjoy. <laughs> Yuck. Do we have to? Is that your response? <laughs> yes, I mean... I'm only mentioning it because Euron is omnipresent. I think they're trying to set him up as a B villain, but they don't have the time to waste on Euron Greyjoy. <laughs> well, and especially because he's running. Like, once he found out about the White Walkers, he was like, peace out, I'm going to my island, and good luck, you guys. So, he was immediately out. Is he out to stay, though? I don't know. I have a hard time kind of seeing him in the in the rest of the last season, maybe not until the very end when it's all over or something, but I don't see him being, unless he comes back to help Cersei in some way. Well, Yara and Theon are still hanging out there. Theon's mm -hmm. motivated the troops. He's back to sanity, so we think or hope. So maybe House Greyjoy will, Your Honor, no, mm -hmm. come in and swoop in and... So maybe an episode? Maybe? I hope. <laughs> no. Just to kind of tie that up. They need, they need I didn't remember okay, that with you. Because yeah. they either need to... They need to kill him in some way for Yara and Theon to retake the Greyjoy house. Yeah. I don't care if they do, I guess. Yeah. I, they, I think they will. <laughs> I like her. I do. Yeah, I like her. I, always like, I her. like her, so like I kind of do want things to go her way, but I don't know. I just don't care that much about their little side story. Like, I, just I think can't. it's too much of a distraction, and I'm trying to figure out how or if they really matter in the overall scheme of right. things. I don't know, I'm not seeing it, but maybe they're more important than, I don't know, maybe one of those two will do something important at the end, and yeah. so then they will have been, I can't imagine what, but 
they'll sacrifice themselves to save somebody more important. Whatever. You know, like me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Or Gendry. What about that guy? He's back. Thank goodness. Why? <laughs> He's the best looking guy on that show, in my opinion. So I will take oh, all the gendry I can. That's some bold claims. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the audience heard you on that. Kylie just melted not <laughs> Yeah, thank you, man. <laughs> really? You like him? Have you seen him without his shirt on in the blacksmithery? Place. Okay, <laughs> there are like eyes being sent across the room. Yeah. <laughs> it went to an uncomfy I mean, place for me. For me. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very nice warhammer. <laughs> he <does. laughs> very true. Rob doesn't say much, but when he does. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know it's why. A very he's... nice warhammer. <laughs> I don't know why he's there. I don't know except to run for the raven that went fast. Yeah, yeah. so maybe that was it. He just is there. And he's back for a purpose. He and Arya had a thing at one point. Like, yeah, I mean, she just, was like young, but you know what I mean? Maybe something. There was something along there. that line. But yeah, they went Because Arya has human emotions now. She does. She, I just, <laughs> she still does. She's working on she's it. She's not yeah. anywhere near <laughs> Bran, but you know. Yes, what Bran's about Bran? Bran? You know. It makes everything weird. <laughs> <laughs> he's the guy you don't he want to invite to your party because like, I mean, he I, makes it awkward. I get, it, I get he's the three-eyed raven, and he's just, you know, at this point, you know, Catatonic. just a shell of a human, and I understand, but it's like, God, you could be more helpful. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> I, I like, see all. Yeah. Will you help me out? What was it like being hurt on your wedding night? That's not the question! <laughs> <laughs> you look Talk beautiful. about uncomfy. Awesome. That wasn't yeah. that nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants to relive that moment, thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, what's his... He's got to have a purpose. Yeah, what, what the hell yeah. is all this for? <laughs> Who's he going to turn out to be? What does the three-eyed raven help do anyway? Other than see... Well... <laughs> I, well, well see other than see and not really tell anybody. <laughs> yeah. Right. Is it implied that, you know, the, the old three-eyed raven, you know, obviously the omnipresent thing, you know, he had... Max people, von Sydow. You know, he had, Yeah, well, Max von Sydow. <laughs> He had people protecting him, and, you know, he was up in the far north and stuff like that. And I'm not saying he was the one force that was, like, holding back the White Walkers and the White Walker threat, because there was lots of things. They were dormant, there was the wall, there's, you know, stuff, right? But right. at some point, I have a feeling that, you know, the Three-Eyed Raven, aside from just being weird and being able to see all and, and present and, and what will be and blah, 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 like, if they are going to contain and kill the White Walker threat, I feel like the Three-Eyed Raven's going to help them stay down, you know? Oh. Keep them sealed in some way, or... Good point. Something like that, because it's just, we killed them dead, now they're dead. So he's our cog for the end of the story. Yeah, you could be the, the finger in the dike at the end. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we um, pushed him back to this thing, you know, and now he's... I buy that. Maybe he has to head north and do the same job that yeah. was done before. Mm -hmm. I must go. They do try to connect Bran Stark to Bran the Builder, who built the wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so could there be. could be some of that as well. Yeah. Well, we need a new wall. Yep. We do need a new wall. No. It's very much demolished. Call the contractors, please. Yeah, I mean, I guess if we're going into slight like, predictions for what's going to happen, I think that is Bran's purpose. Like, in my in my opinion, he's he's going to do something, whether he, he sacrifices himself and no longer becomes even weirdly corporeal like the threat. I don't know. But I feel like something's going to happen where, like, if they're going to contain the White Walker threat, he's going to have some hand in maybe not, like, doing it. Like, maybe they do it with their battles and their swords and their guns and their bombs and their bombs and their guns. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> R.I.P. But like, his his magics, his his presence is going to be help contain it, seal it, drive it back, do something, you know, and stay out sort of thing so that we can have a, a Westeros once again. I like it. I can't think of a better prediction or purpose yeah. for him. He might be the person to tell John who he is, too. Well, I think he, well, either him or Sam, because well, they did have well, the conversation. I think, but I think it's going to be, Bran's going to tell him, and then I think Sam and Gilly are going to come back, and then Sam will confirm it in the records that they found. But how does this information help anyone, is the next question. Other than maybe John being a dragon rider. Well, he has a legitimate claim to the throne, even more so than Danny does, because he's That's the next true. male heir from the Mad King. So where does that prediction land? I let you, I watch you. It today. could create some tension between John and Danny for the Iron Throne. Who do you think will emerge victorious? Who do you think both will survive? Let's start no. there. No. I would initially, you know, 
even before the show started and, and, and you know, reading the books, my answer would have been they both have to survive, but now I feel like that is not the case mm -hmm. anymore. No, I think I think Danny will be the one to die. Yeah, somebody's going to sacrifice themselves. I, think, I, I have a feeling I think Danny, Danny will die and John will live on to rule. I mean, it would make sense heir. for the fact of, like, yeah. you're secretly a Targaryen so that you, have, yeah. you could do it now. Well, I mean, in the whole series, it's called A Song of Ice and Fire. John is ice and fire. Yep. Well, we're back to this again. We're back to that again. I know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going into it. I'm not trying to set Jay off. So the <laughs> logically, knowing that, logically, if only one were to survive, it, would be, be John. it would be John. No, I think you're 100% right on that. Yeah. Ice and fire. Ice, John, fire, Danny. Especially because, you know, the fire. dying He's and coming back to life thing. Yeah. It's kind of special. But yeah. maybe she's got that gene, too. She did walk out of a fire. So. Mm -hmm. I guess it would be one of those things where, like, if, I think thematically, I think we've sort of hit that on the head in the fact that it's probably, if one of them is going to die, it's probably Daenerys, because of all these things sort of fit. It's more if, emotional. It, it, yeah. If it were the other way, for some reason, I, I'm not going to say I'm going to be, like, completely shocked by it, but I think that if both just survive and they're cool in the end, like, you know, if Daenerys and Tyrion and Jon survived with her on the Iron Throne, him king in the north and super happy, and Tyrion being super happy as, as the hand of the king and blah, blah, blah. I think that is, even though we all want that, that would be, I think it's super unlikely. Oh, yeah. Well, and that goes back to that old theory of the three dragons, so, th so three riders, and then I think last time in the Lost recording... It's Lost! <laughs> in the Lost recording, I think we talked about that now that there's an ice dragon, like, that would be Jon's yeah. dragon, because he's... Undead. Undead. So like he could ride it. I I really hope that. Uh, I really do. Okay. Even if yeah. because the R plus L equals J thing, the the three dragon rider theory has been what I've hung my hat on yeah. all this time because they are my three favorite characters. And I agree. And even if that's like totally pat and boring, I don't care. I like those three. Okay. Okay. But. I don't think they can all survive either. Mm -hmm. I really just think it would be too perfect and too neat, and that's not the show we have. Right. I just wanted to make sure we talked about it, because we I know we talked about it before, and yes. we had talked about that theory on multiple recordings. Yes. So And it's a very cool theory. It's like I, our last hope for the theory. And last hope for the dragon, the poor dragon who's a zombie. But blue fighter. <laughs> so I feel that, but I feel like, you know, the poignant scene we saw at the end of the season was the wall. Yes. Being destroyed. Yeah. And I screamed I that, at the TV. And I think that that's a theme. And, I, and if I were to make a prediction, that's my, my prediction, since the, things are going to get much, much worse before they get better. And I don't think that I'm going out on a limb saying that. No. But what I'm saying is, is that I think that as the White Walker threat comes south, they are going to destroy everything. And so, you know, it's it's one of those things where one of, t in my opinion, one of two things sort of happens is that this Daenerys John combo, whoever survives at the end, is on the Iron Throne. And that is sort of the end of where we leave off. But what are they, what's their kingdom is the question. Because I feel like, I feel like Winterfell is completely done. You know. You talked about this in the yeah. last episode. That's in the lost. last episode. Like, <laughs> it's, it's lost. lost. <laughs> Winterfell's in the north. They're coming. I feel like the White Walkers are coming close to and or at King's Landing. So the question is, so like everything north of that is basically going to be. Wasted. Wasted. Raised okay. to the ground. So like, to me, Winterfell has like a 0, 0.0 chance of surviving. You know, I mean, the ruins will be there and we'll rebuild and all that sort of stuff. But I think the parts of King's... The question is, is King's Landing going to be completely raised to the ground? Or partially or anything like that. It's it's this fact of like, okay, they're going to... I feel like they're going to repel the White Walker threat because the whole idea of the concept of we end the show but the White Walker's winning and everyone's dead is really morbid. And bleak. And I don't think they would go that way. And I don't think so. So I think that they're going to repel the threat somehow. But the question is... What's left when they're done? And I think yeah. that's that's an interesting question because, you know, in our sort of you know bluebird, the zippity doo kind of future, <laughs> things Aww. are still standing. We have all of our dragons. We have all of our people, and it's like I don't think that's going to be the case at all. Like a lot of it's going to be missing. In fact, most of it's going to be missing. And so we're going to, you know, whoever's our king or queen, in the Iron Throne's going to look over at this wasteland and go, oh boy. Yeah, it's not going to be a position you want mm -hmm. anymore because you're going to have to be the leader to lead them through rebuilding. It would break the wheel. It since would she was break talking about breaking the wheel all the time. Yeah. And the wheel is already mostly broken anyway with so many houses fallen. It's true. I mean, I guess the question is who who lives, who survives. Not even who dies, I think who survives. I think Tyrion will survive. I just think he's been such a survivor up until the point and he 
as much as John is our proxy, I think Tyrion is also our proxy for different things. Yep. And he would be the most appropriate proxy for the moments you're talking about. I think Tyrion will survive. And I, also, I please don't kill Peter Dinklage. Because <laughs> I like him. <laughs> He's done well for himself. Yeah, he is. After that, Arya, I think, has a good chance. I don't know what she does when she survives, but I do think they've shown her to be a survivor. Yeah, I think that's a good point. What does she do after? Mm -hmm. And I think the, the rebuilding is really interesting. And I think so much, many of their struggles that they're having is because they've lost past knowledge. Yes. So like, we have several moments where this past knowledge comes into play. We've got all the, the weaponry, and we've got the, the healing glass. of what's the condition with what's his butt? Grayscale. Grayscale. Yes. So like we see like Sam, who I know in the last one, the lost episode, like I think I called him like hero librarian or something like that. Yeah. Like he's the one researching and finding all these past answers and they're gonna have to look back to some of that old knowledge to fight this new slash recurring threat because it's like where they've lost touch with some of these older ideas that they're suffering now. Because if they had kept up with those things, they wouldn't be at such risk. But it's because they moved away from some of those old traditions that they're actually paying a price. I think that's a really interesting concept that maybe it's just the history major nerd in me that's like, all right, so what do they take from the past, but then, you know, what modern things can stay and still function? That is interesting, though, because if you consider the characters who have heeded the past, quote-unquote, like Arya, for example, who her knowledge is the House of Black and White knowledge, right? Or John is very open to those secrets. He's the one who sent Sam off to Old Town to learn them. I mean, even Daenerys in her own way, she's heedful of the past. She just wants to change the past. Right. But she mm -hmm. continually talks about it. I'm wondering if that is the difference. Now, also in the lost episode that's lost, I remember Jay talking about Arya having a function in the last battle. I don't know if you remember that. I don't know if I can remember that completely. What is all this training for where she kind of comes in and does something awesome to the White Walkers? I mean, must. I mean, because initially when you thought, when I thought about Arya, you know, she, we talked about Arya's list, right? Yes. And, and of all, the, you know, people have come and gone and all that sort of stuff, but one of the main names on the list is Cersei Lannister. So then the question is, does Arya kill Cersei? But I think we've talked about how it's probably Jaime that kills Cersei. So if Arya doesn't kill Cersei, who does she kill? Because I mean, we hate to talk in the effects, the effects of Arya's function is to kill somebody, but That's here, what here she's we are. Going she, to do. <laughs> she, she's literally become a killing machine. Yes. Did we talk about Arya becoming Jamie, Jamie to, to kill? kill Cer we did in the last. I think we did. We in the did. Last episode, we said that. Kind it's of lost. Bring it up again. <laughs> I think I just yeah. did. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Arya <laughs> taking Jamie's face to kill. Right. I really like that. Yeah, I'm so too. glad you remember that. Yeah, but is I it, vote for it. Is it technically then Jamie killing Cersei? Do we care? It would be sad. I don't want mm. prophecies. <laughs> but prophecies, you you know, they're kind of open. You know, just yeah, it's still Jamie's face. It We're doesn't open matter. Interpretation. Cersei will think it's Jamie. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that's a possibility. I'm not saying it's not a possibility. That's it's either Jamie It'd kills her twist. or Arya as Jamie. All right. So yeah, in order of like satisfactory endings for Cersei for me, now it's Jamie, then Arya dressed as Jamie with his face, and then Tyrion, Tyrion, and then anything else. Uh, I don't know, I put Arya above Jaime because, yeah, because she call, caused, her and her dumb father caused all this heartache. That's true, you got that for Arya. <laughs> yes. The, the yeah. And I guess the only downside is then wouldn't she have to kill Jaime yep. to take to his, his face? face. Yep. Well, and that's oh. like how I'm kind of seeing things is because Jaime's riding north at the end of the, yep. at the end yeah. of the last season. So if he's going there to help them fight and maybe he dies in the war somehow or another and then but I don't like I don't see Arya killing Jamie just so that she can get close to Cersei. Like no, she'll see it maybe as an opportunity. Yeah, like as, if he dies in war then she yeah, sees that opportunity, take his face, then goes south and So you think Jamie will go out Cersei. heroically? I, I think so. Okay. I think so. I feel like he's the way that his storyline has 
you know, kind of come around in the last season, like you're seeing, I don't know, he's, he seems a lot more human and it seems like he's finally, finally understanding what he should be doing. Mm -hmm. so. Who takes out the Night King? You think so? Who takes out? Oh, who oh, takes, John. takes out? It's gotta be John. I don't so. know if it's John. I don't know. Is that Daenerys' a sacrifice? Or like, is, is it that... Bran warding in, into yeah. something? And like into the dragon? Or... Or... Yeah. Oh yeah, did we talk about Bran warding into the ice dragon to like take it over? Yeah, that, I think that was a prediction we had discussed. Well, they have developed that would be uncharacteristically useful. <laughs> <laughs> it would be, but it would explain why we kept him around. It's true. Besides the whole he's well, the yeah. one to Socially take control awkward. of things. <laughs> Well, teenage boys. But I mean, that can be, <laughs> he, he maybe isn't the mystical thing that holds them back. I mean, he could just, his purpose could be to warg into the ice dragon in an opportune moment, and that's it. Then, what, he's just weird around the castle afterwards, just... <laughs> cool. yeah. Hanging out in his wheelchair. Yeah. Being weird. What's up, Brent? I'm Three-Eyed Raven. We know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know you. Tell us anything else. <laughs> anything else. Make anything useful. Any other mm -hmm. statement. Possible. I don't know, but like I think it's hard because every, we're assuming that everyone who's alive is still going to have some part to play, but do they all have to play a really big part? I, I think they will play a part. I mean, Kristen's word is dominoes. Yeah. I think there will be a series of parts that just grow bigger mm -hmm. and bigger and bigger. Some will have bigger parts than others, and I think it's who I, you know the characters we've been talking about. It, it, it's, it would seem really weird for Daenerys to just you know die over here. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly we don't look at her story anymore. Which yeah, P.S. I don't want her to die, but if I were to pick between the two, she's probably the most likely to do it because Jon Snow did come back from the dead. Mm -hmm. Well, and I nearly died yeah. in the Battle of the Bastards and still didn't die. Well, it makes her story more tragic. It does. Although, it would go against the whole strong women, strong female characters that we're championing. All unless, by the she way goes out Snow. unless she goes out heroically. True. Where does Sansa end up? Is she going to live? Is she going to be queen of the North in the end? If there's a North to go back to, possibly. Well, the land will be there. Yeah, I think, I think one of the questions is... Because we have two things to take care of in these six episodes. We have the King's Landing stuff to take care of. We have the White Walker thing to take, take care of. And as I said, I think I think Winterfell is just going to go. But the question is, do they go up and try to fight and, and protect it? You know, and then put people like Jamie Lannister, Sansa, Brienne, like people in harm's way there. And then a couple of them die there because they, they don't win there. Or do they all retreat and go south? And, and do they set Winterfell as a trap? Right. To try to kill as many of the White Walkers as they can. Yeah. And does it end up with just one person in charge and having to pick up all the pieces, or do they have people in strategic areas to help them with that in the end? I mean, do we have to kill off everybody else, or do some people get in line and start helping in whatever way they can in their their places? You know who'd be good at that? Lady Mormont. <laughs> yes! Oh, yes! <laughs> I love her. Lyanna Mormont. The sassiest 11 or 12 year old in the history of television. She was only supposed to be on for one episode. Well, is it going to be tough? Is, is this going to be a Walt from Lost sort of thing where like, you know, <laughs> by the time they get to the next season, is she going to be like 28? And so, you know. No. You know. Fortunately, girls don't grow as fast as boys and also and don't have that voice changing phenomenon. Right. And they've been <laughs> filming since what, January or February yeah. of 2018, so. I'm so glad that we brought her into this conversation. Yes. No Just conversation so She's Rob's favorite, right, Rob? She does a special place with her. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Any other predictions? You talked about Clegane Bowl. I still want it. Why? Because why not? I don't know. It just, the mountain has to go at some point. It's yeah. another, he's another block to Cersei, to, for Cersei to go. It's true. And that's what we all want. Whether it's going to happen or not, we don't know. But I think it would be really entertaining television. It would give the Hound a nice note, but he it has found religion, you know. He has. So good for him. <laughs> but Clegane Bowl, we all want it. Just let it happen. I mean, I'm all right either way. Yeah. <laughs> well, if my other, other avid Game of Thrones viewers also want it to happen outside of this room in internet land. The internet is full of people who want things. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> Everybody's nodding. Yes. Pondering the truth of that statement yeah. in our own special so ways. It's true. Mm -hmm. 
so true. <laughs> Anything else that you want to say about season seven, what you hope to see in season eight, or now here's the real question that I want you to consider. What is your ideal ending, regardless of what you think might happen? Ooh. What is your ideal ending for Game of Thrones? After all this time, you've divested oh and invested many years of your life. Ideal is so different than like a real, mm -hmm. <laughs> like what's really going to happen though. I think, yeah. it, and this, this, this is going to seem like a cop out, but I want the ending to make sense. That's what I want. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't necessarily. It's care. not a cop out, Jay. I mean, you know, we can, we obviously we care about character. I, I I think my favorite character is Daenerys, right? So like, obviously, I care about Daenerys surviving more than the others. But like, if her death makes sense in the story, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. You know, so so to me, it's kind of like if they go off the rails, or I feel like they went off the rails to do either to swerve us or just oh, we want this to happen or oh, this. I think I would be a little less satisfied with that. Like if the ending. If they set up an ending and then they knock down that ending, that's what I want. I agree with that because even though we've witnessed much tragedy and heart pulling, that's the one thing I think Game of Thrones has done better than most TV shows is tell a story that, yeah, you may not like the outcome, but the outcome makes sense. They've led you, they've entertained you, and that's ultimately what I want. I ultimately want Cersei to die. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Chelsea's holding fast. Yep. That's my ideal ending. Is I just I want she deserves something, something to come to mm -hmm. her in a very bad way, just because she has been horrible every single season, especially to the Stark girls, and yep. especially to the Stark <laughs> family. So yeah, I'm all about. That's my ideal ending. Is she's gone, and Danny and or John are in power somehow, but, and there are babies. <laughs> I'll build off of Chelsea's ideal ending and say, in addition to what she just said, I would like to see Sansa as the Lady of Winterfell, as the Queen in the North. I, I kind of see, I kind of see I that can, happening yeah. too. And see, like Arya, if Arya makes it through, I see Arya as either on John or Danny's council in King's Landing, or she's assisting Sansa in Winterfell. Mm -hmm. It's a world ruled by all the Starks. Potentially. Maybe. I mean, I don't know what Bran's going to do, but... I always kind of not think of him when I see the stars. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. he's the three-eyed raven, period. Oh, is he? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah. Me neither. Perhaps he Spoiler. <laughs> Perhaps he could tell me. <laughs> he will. <laughs> don't worry. Rob, Amanda? I see Danny on the throne in the end, raising a little incest baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious how much time they're going to spend with only six episodes left, like showing the morning after, so to speak. You know, we're on limited time. I know they sped things up so quickly, but how much will they show of the aftermath? And they, I just leave it open ended. Are we going to get full closure on everything? I, I could see Jon Snow coming back from the dead now and then dying one more time as the ultimate martyr. Oh, I don't know because I vacillate. Like, I really like the. I, I, I trust that it will make sense whatever happens. And the realist in me says they're not all going to make it. I still like the idea of both Danny and John making it through the whole thing. Yeah. I don't know. It just seems really nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so if we're saying, like, ideal pie in the sky, I think it would be really cool if that came true. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm going to get that. But I think I'm emotionally prepared either way. Like, it'll be okay. I think either one can make sense with the narrative of the story so far. And, like, I get the noble sacrifice that one of them may have to make, yada yada. But I like both of them, and I would like to see them make it through. So I'm, I'm gonna stick with that. I, I like that. I can't believe I'm like a propo you know, proposing that the Hollywood ending, the like happy ending. I hate that, but in this case, I there's been enough death already. Let's just <laughs> it's Game of Thrones. I know. Be more. <laughs> I, I think that's so it. Like more. usually, I I don't mind like. I actually like when lots of people suffer and die because it feels more true to humanity. Dark, I know. But <laughs> we went from Hollywood to dark. Cool. I kind of like the happy ending in this case. I mean, like, it's still going to be total destruction, so I don't know if it counts as a happy ending. There is that. It's going to be bittersweet, yeah. I think. Well, they've, they've even said, too, with interviews with the producers that, like, during the, the read-through of the finale script, that it was extremely emotional and... 
that characters they fell to their deaths like character oh. after character after character yeah so we don't know if it's if that's literal or like how many this one producer woman meant but she's like it was you know it was very interesting to watch them fall one by one throughout that last reading they have been touting in the press that fans will love the finale they said it's going to be it's just a bold claim divisive they said too Oh. It's going to be very divisive. I didn't hear the divisive oh. word. That means and rip John or rip Danny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. What, as if, long as what, like, if, what if Gendry ends up on the throne? Like, oh, Well, you'd like that, Kristen. So, that's true. <laughs> well, I would, but it would also seem a little weird. But why else would they bring him back if he wasn't going to be a serious player? I have to tell this story. It's short. My mom could not have cared less about this show. Decided because me and my sister talk about it so much, and my brother and sister-in-law, that she was going to watch it. First of all, my mom does not binge watch. She bought all of these on Blu-ray, but she watched all seven seasons in the course of three and a half weeks. My mom. This is not a thing that happens, number one. Number two, she keeps saying, now they brought that gentry back. Why would they bring that gentry back? <laughs> What's he? I think he's got just as much of a possibility of claim for the throne as anyone. He does. <laughs> Maybe a dark, yeah, dark horse. Mm -hmm. See. What if you what if you fished out of that sea? Oh, it's a herring. It looks red. <laughs> <laughs> that could be it too. But... Communism is just a yeah. red herring. But he's I mean he's part of season eight. He's a big part. They've said so. Oh, we'll see. I mean he is. There's other Baratheon's things that kid, I know. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. See, yeah, I don't. I thought we were done with them. them. <laughs> yeah. Adding Baratheons back in. Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, see, I don't read things on the internet, and so now that the books are done, I have no yeah, idea there's, where anything's yeah. heading. Spoilers, spoilers. Kristen likes to go and... I do. She does. Like, she I wants to bring the information. I mean, I've got a big spoiler right here on my phone, but I don't Ooh. know if I should say anything. No, not on the podcast. No. <laughs> I do on other podcasts. She does. Do you? Oh yeah. my goodness. She does. You monster. I feel like people <laughs> should have to go find that information for themselves. We try to be an all-service podcast, yeah. Amanda. Yeah, you should have, like, spoilers spoilers you should read it and then make sure edit it out. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, that happens. Yeah. <laughs> you can do that if you want. You How about I show you, Kylie? Me. I'll show you on my phone, and then oh, you can no. go from there. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we may have talked about that last time. We did talk about oh, it last we? time. We did. Okay, yeah. soon the lost episode. Spoilers, spoilers, lost. spoilers. Lost, it's lost. It's so lost. <laughs> there was a news alert that... The set of Winterfell was set on fire. Oh, oh yeah, that was film. okay. That's right. <laughs> oh yeah, we already that. Oh yeah, yeah, we already said we just yeah we know we, we know it. Yeah. Anyway, okay. yeah, 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 up and yeah, everybody so was unimpressed. Yeah, I thought it was really like something really big. Really I will say though that. Before that information, I did say that Winterfell is going to get burned to the ground. You did. Before. Yeah, I did. Like, yep. And that, me, in that, both that, versions of this well, podcast. That's, that's, yes. not, that's, <laughs> not, that's not an if, that's a win. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they're just, yeah, they're just a small... Yeah, I don't even mm -hmm. feel like that's much of a Yeah, small but small then again, is it part of the show, or were they just done with that set and decided just to light it on fire to throw people off? We don't know. Either way, they're done with Winterfell. They're so done with Winterfell. That's really sad, because it was nice. <laughs> yeah. Setting it on fire. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, they set it on fire. Well, you know. <laughs> Otherwise, people will sneak in there. And... They could have made it a tourist attraction. They did right? that for the Lord of the Rings stuff in New Zealand. Because they left it intact. Yeah. Oh, that New Zealand. Well, it's wacky tourism, guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it looks pretty. Well, where was Winterfell <laughs> built? Where did they build? It's in Ireland. It's in Ireland. Belfast. They didn't want the Irish to have tourist money, I guess. I don't know. Aww. But I mean, if it's, pivotal, if it's pivotal to the story... That it burnt down and there was no point of saving it as a tourist structure. But it's right. all plywood and foam anyway. It's not even. Right. It doesn't matter. I know. It's it the world does, we though. live in. It's not a real place. I yeah. Know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They made Harry Potter world. They can make. Oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, they, but they also they did say too that George, our good buddy George R. R. Martin, he gave the creators three big twists that weren't revealed yet as far as the books went. One of them was sacrificing Shireen was a big twist. Yeah, that was rude. Hodor's backstory was one of his big twists that wasn't out yet. And then the third twist is something that'll be in the final episode or close to the final episode. There's a twist? Yeah. Oh, oh God. I think see coming. <laughs> Everyone breathe. It'll this be is okay. going to be quite a bumpy ride. <laughs> it always is. It's Game of Thrones. It's true. I'm very, very invested. Yeah. Have I mentioned that? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a three-eyed raven. <laughs> 
<laughs> Anything else you want to say about season seven, what you hope to see in season eight, or how you'd like to see this series end? Dragon riders, more dragons, baby dragons. Babies! Oh, baby dragons. <laughs> Chelsea just wants babies, period. Can Daenerys have human babies or only dragon babies? Like, if she has John's baby, will it yeah. be like a dragon baby? She's been under the impression that she can't have children. I until that until a certain thing happened. Like, it's there was something in her. I thought that Dothraki woman told her she couldn't have children, period. No, if you your was... room, it's something like you will be barren until this thing happens. Mm. I don't know what the thing was. Let me let me Google it. Maybe it's thing. getting it on with Jon Snow. <laughs> it was something, yeah. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so there is a condition under which she could have human babies. Yes. And not just dragon babies. Right. Because I'd really like more dragon babies, but I don't know how else And to she get didn't them. lay those eggs. She just incubated them. I know. But still. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> we're, we're really getting down to the nitty gritty. <laughs> She didn't lay those eggs. We're just silly now, people. <laughs> she didn't lay those eggs, Jay. <laughs> That's a good podcast. Are there other eggs out there? Or That's a these, good question. Or are either of these dragons that are still not ice dragons female? No, they're all male. They're all male. So, like, we need a female dragon somewhere. Yeah. One of the last things I will say is, to your point, Amanda, about the hero librarian is I feel that as much as we like Sam, I feel like his importance in however this ends, I don't even feel like we can state it enough. I feel like he's going to be super huge. I And as it goes, and, it, and I think that it, <laughs> it has to do, it has to do with the application of knowledge. It's sort of like what you were talking about with yeah. the, with the, oh, we need to learn the past and stuff like that, but it's not just learn. I mean, it, we learned something. Well, like Sam wanted to be a maester, and you know, we always, you know, yeah, some of the maesters that we've seen have been a little shady and all that sort of stuff. But it's they hold the knowledge. But when he goes to Old Town, they're like, yeah, we hold knowledge, but we don't do anything with it. Right. We just hold it and record, and we're just going to be here recording. Things that's and, what Professor Slug right. said. Right. And I mean, that's the whole thing with Jorah and the grayscale. It's just more along the lines of like Sam's like, I read it in a book, and then I did it, and they're like, you weren't supposed to do anything. Why not? There's the knowledge. Why don't we do something with it? And I think that the fact that he leaves with a bunch of the books and goes is just the fact that he's like, I have knowledge, let's apply it. And I think that that's going to be super important for everything coming up. And the Agreed. sharing versus the hoarding yes. of that yes. knowledge. This behind the, the restricted section of the mm -hmm. library with the keys and gates. Like, that shouldn't be it. We should all have this knowledge and we should be able to use this knowledge. Right. Which is such a modern way of thinking about knowledge. Were you looking something up? I was looking up the thing about Daenerys, but it, that was in reference to Drogo, was that prophecy that I was thinking from oh, the Dothraki right. woman. Yeah, we were talking about can she have the human babies. Yeah, because the prophecy was all, you know, when the sun rises in the west and sets in the east, when the seeds go dry, when the mountains blow and the wind like leaves. Poetic. Yeah. And cryptic, yeah. like all the prophecies. I think she's going to get pregnant by John. Yeah, well, and the other part of the, the last part of the prophecy was only death can pay for life. And Viserion, the dragon, has now died. So is that going to play into something? Well, One if John her... died, so then yeah. it's John because he's died, dead, yeah. he can now... I don't know. With... Or does she sacrifice herself for this kid mm -hmm. who is the Song of Ice and Fire? Yeah, who knows? He could be the song. He is the song. Because yeah. <laughs> he would be ice and fire. He would be ice and fire. Because he's ice, she's fire, but he's also ice and fire. There's a lot of ice and fire There's around. There's a lot of ice and fire. <laughs> right, we've, we've been here too. <laughs> but it's important. I know. It's so important. Are you going to keep watching? Yes. 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 I will save the recommend question. I always put it in there just by rote, but I'm going to save that this time because we're on the penultimate. We're talking about the penultimate season. At the end, though, you're going to have to think very critically about whether or not you would recommend Game of Thrones. For the record, I think I've converted my whole family, except mm -hmm. for my sister. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, can I say one last thing? You sure I want to know the deal with Azor Ahai, the prince or princess that was promised. Can they answer that? Well, I think they will. I They better. I think they will by whoever ends up on the throne. Sure. I just want them. That's the, that's the last thing I want to know. That's one storyline I want wrapped up. Although it would be nice to tie it to should we care about those stupid witches and Melisandre. She left, but she's coming back. She said so. I don't know. Cool. Because <laughs> you think she's dreamy? No. <laughs> I think we've done talked about it a second time. <laughs> 
as much as we're going to do that. So since we've done that, I now have to do this. CBU was produced by Backpacker Productions, run by truly the Chief Couch Potato, and hails from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Please, if you like what you hear, take the time to rate us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and Google Play. That means give us stars, comments, reviews. Let us know how we're doing, what you like, what you don't, what we should keep, what we should toss. That's how it works around here. If you have suggestions on shows we might consider, contact us at our website, couchpotatoesunite.wordpress.com, via email at couchpotatoesunitepodcast at gmail.com, or via Facebook and Twitter, though of course we add new and old shows to chat about around the water cooler all the time. We have several more new episodes coming down the pike. We're back on track after all that lostness. And if you miss old episodes or want to know in general what we cover, we're everywhere. Just find us. You can find us in Google searches. Couch Potatoes Unite sends us to the very top. It's an accomplishment. Subscribe on our website, our channels, our social media. Stay up on new events and episodes. Until the next time, all available seasons of Game of Thrones are available to stream on HBO Go or Now or your wherever you watch HBO I think it's still only available through season six at least on Amazon Prime though season seven is all out on the digital media like the blu-rays and the DVDs if you want to go that route our Game of Thrones panel will next reconvene following the release of the airing of the eighth season finale i.e. the series finale and we will be doing a two-part goodbye miniseries in which we discuss not only the final season but also take a look back at the show as an entirely big whole Game of Thrones is not expected to return until 2019, so we are not expected to return until 2019. In the meantime, then, and until next time, and until next episode, new episodes published every Wednesday. Keep listening. Keep watching. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.